happy girl. Hello, friends, and welcome back to another podcast of Women at the Well Ministries, where we believe that all of us have to come to Jesus like the woman at the well in John chapter 4. Our highest priority is making God real in your life. Whether you are listening in our app, in your favorite podcasting app, or on our website at watwm.org, we invite you to sit down with us as we look to the scriptures to learn more about God and to strengthen your daily walk with Jesus Christ. We often talk about the gifts that Jesus brought to each of us when he came to earth to live among us, but seldom do we talk about what he left to rescue you and me. His presence on earth made our salvation possible, but it cost him everything. Join us in this podcast of Women at the Well Ministries as Kim takes us on a journey through the scriptures, revealing what Jesus left in order to be the greatest gift ever given. Hello, and thank you for joining us in this podcast of Woman at the Well Ministries. What a wonderful theme we have for today's podcast. We are talking about the birth of Jesus Christ. When we think about the birth of Jesus Christ, we can quickly sum up in our head the gifts that that brings. He brought salvation wrapped in swaddling clothes, and he's the gift that keeps on giving and every day we can open the presence of Jesus Christ in our life as we enjoy his presence in our day-to-day activities. As we follow the directions of the Holy Spirit, as we feel the comfort that the Holy Spirit gives us and Jesus left us when he went away to prepare a place for us that where he is, we might be also. We fully can understand the love that Jesus has for us. We'll never understand the depth and breadth of it, but we can understand that we are loved beyond measure, that we are loved unconditionally, and that his love is powerful, that it redeems and it restores. As we begin to look at the birth of Jesus Christ in the account in Luke chapter 2, it's so easy to see what that brought to us. But sometimes we don't take a moment to reflect on what it cost him and what he left. Jesus left it all to rescue you and me. Let's pray. Our kind and most gracious to Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you seems so inadequate to express the gratitude that we have for the presence of Jesus Christ in our lives. Lord, we thank you that while we were yet sinners, you died for us. And we're grateful that you have given a whole invitation to every single person ever born to come to know you personally, that we may dwell with you eternally. Lord, I want to thank you for the love that demonstrates, for the love you continually give me, for the grace that you bestow upon me, and for the joy that it is to walk hand in hand with you. Lord, be with us as we walk through Luke chapter 2 and we begin to think about what it cost you to come to us, what you left behind that we might have life forever. Lord, help us to open our hearts and our minds to you. Strengthen our understanding. Sweep through our heart like you told us in Psalms 139 that you would search us if we would ask. Lord, help us to know what to rid of ourselves that we may be filled with you. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're going to begin our reading in Luke chapter 2 and verse 1, and it reads as this. And it came to pass in those days 
that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while there were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And he shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Luke 2.11 says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. This is the greatest gift that has been ever given. For had he not been born, he could not have died on the cross of Calvary. And without his shedding of blood to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, we would be left lost and undone. But because Jesus came to earth to seek and to save those which were lost, we have the opportunity to live eternally with him in heaven. Jesus came to seek and to save those which were lost. And John 10.10 says that he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. The invitation that is given in this passage of scripture is for everybody. Because he says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved in Romans 10.13. In Romans 3.23, he says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So the purpose was to save all people. Peter tells us that he wishes that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So as we sit the next few moments contemplating the greatness of this event that happens where the angels came and glorified and worshiped the Lord, telling glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. The shepherds were visited and were told to fear not. They were going to be given information that was going to lead them to an understanding that nothing like this before had ever happened and nothing like this again will ever happen. But the birth of Jesus Christ has come. Now, no doubt they had lots of knowledge of the prophetic understandings of the talk that were going on about a Messiah going to be born. But you know, you hear a lot of things and you talk about a lot of things, but there's a big difference in talking and hearing and seeing and believing. These shepherds were going to be given a great blessing. The outcasts of the world, the people who would not have any standing in the community were the ones that the angels come to tell that Jesus was being born. They were favored because they were representing all of mankind. Not because they had in their experience the same things as the greatest people in the world, but they came as the lowly. And so it showed us that Jesus is for all. Because if you can reach the lowest, 
then you can always reach the highest. If what you have can spread the gambit from low to high, then you have all that is needed by everyone. And Jesus fits that description. There's never been one like him before him, and there'll never be one like him after him. And Jesus says in John chapter 14 and verse 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So let's think about what it means to come to the Father through Jesus. First, he had to come. You need to understand that when Jesus came as a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes in a manger, he was fully God. And he was fully man. He was no more God on the cross than he was in the manger. We often look at this babe as a helpless, weak, powerless person. But though he came in human form as a babe, just as all of us did, He was no more God 12 years later than he was when he appeared. He didn't have to grow into being God. He was always fully God and fully man. And Mary and Joseph raised him. But the Holy Spirit was his father. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, all three in one. That's who Jesus belonged to. Mary was favored among women, among all people, because she was a just and righteous woman. So she had the calling to carry him. Joseph was a just and right man and knew who God was. He was called out to be his earthly father, to teach him his trade of carpentry, to protect him and guide him. Joseph and Mary knew that he was God. Can you imagine what it must have been like to have known that you are protecting the protector? That you're providing for the provider. That you're looking at the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Knowing that one day he was going to save the world. That must have been a burden that only Jesus could have helped them carry. But they accepted their role. And that brings us to my first question. God has a role for you in this life. And it may seem arduous. It may seem difficult. It may seem almost impossible to do. But Mark 9, 23 says, All things are possible to him that believeth. And Jesus says he'll supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. That he will strengthen you to do that which he's called you to do in Philippians 4, 19 and 13. So you don't have the excuse to say, I can't do it. I don't know how to do it. If you're not doing the will of God in your life, if you're not fulfilling the purpose that God has for you, you simply are not doing it because you're choosing not to do it. And Joshua told us to choose you this day whom ye will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You have a choice daily. Jesus himself said that you are to take up your cross, to deny yourself and to follow him daily. Our salvation is secure. John 10, 28 says that no man shall pluck him out of his hand. So it's not that we have to be saved every day. But we do have to be 
committed every day and we have to recommit every day and we have to come to Jesus with a heart that is praying always that we can hear what the Holy Spirit has to say to us that we might walk the walk that God requires of us. And you say to yourself, well, that sounds like a task. Jesus will enable you to do everything he's ever asked you to do. And it will pale in comparison to what he was asked to do. See, he walked among us. He was tempted like as we are, yet without sin. And for 33 years, he walked the face of the earth. The Bible says in John chapter 1 that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. But we don't think about on that night when Mary and Joseph are at the stable. We don't think about when he came. As we're told in Luke 2, 11, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. We don't think about what he left in order to come. Sometimes we talk about the splendor of heaven. But have you really thought about it? Greater Vision has a song that Rodney wrote called He Left It All. And it takes the truth of what happened that night and makes it easy for us to understand. The splendor of heaven is greater than our mind can comprehend because the Bible tells us that I have not seen and the ear hath not heard what lies in store for them that love the Lord. But John on the Isle of Patmos got a glimpse into what heaven was like. There's no crying there. There's no sorrow there. The sun never sets there, and there's no need for the moon and the sun because Jesus is the light. He tells us that. He says, I am the light of the world. And then when we become his children, he places his light in us. Matthew chapter 5 tells us that we are the light of the world. We're to put our light out so the whole world can see. Matthew 5, 16 says, to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. We have characteristics of Jesus when we are his children. And they pass throughout us into the world because his light shines in us and through us. Do a light check. How bright is your light? He says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness in 1 John 1, 9. So as we begin to look at what he left, I want you to remember what he gave you. I want you to remember your purpose to be the light in the world. And I want you to understand he asks us to, to fulfill that purpose the very same way he fulfilled his. But that night that Luke 2 11 is talking about, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. This was his purpose. And these are the things he left behind. He didn't bring an army to help him. He didn't call the 10,000 angels from the cross of Calvary to free him. He didn't bring an angel to praise him day and night. He didn't bring one piece of gold to buy some food to eat. But instead, he laid it all 
at the Savior's feet. He left it all to rescue you and me. He was being worshipped day and night. He was the Son of God. All things were at his disposal. He wasn't going to face ridicule in heaven. He wasn't going to have to work in heaven. He wasn't going to be tempted. He wasn't going to have any need to feel anything but glorious. But he left all of that to be tempted like you and I are tempted, but he didn't sin. To have to labor for his food. To have to face pain, anguish, and even death. He didn't bring one thing of comfort. He didn't bring his robe. He didn't bring his crown. He didn't bring the 10,000 bowing down. He didn't bring not one piece of jasper wool. He left it all. You know, he looks like he doesn't own a thing when he comes to earth. Yet he's the king of kings. If you followed him when he came to earth, not one thing would make you think he was king. Because he put all that aside so that every last one of us would be able to understand who he was. That every last one of us would be able to see ourselves in him. So that every last one of us would understand that we are received and we are loved and we are enough because he makes us enough. He left it all to rescue you and me. And as you begin to think about this babe in a manger, as you begin to understand that he's the gift of all gifts, that because he came, you might have life eternal in heaven. Because he gave, you have the opportunity to receive. Because he loved, he rescued you and me. But don't let your mind forget he left it all to rescue you and to rescue me. Don't ever underestimate what it cost him. It cost him his life on the cross of Calvary because without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. And he became the sacrificial lamb. He who knew no sin became sin that we might have the righteousness of God in us. He paid a sin debt you couldn't pay that he didn't owe because he loves you. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. So as you look at baby Jesus, remember he is fully God. As you contemplate the cost of the cross, Remember, he is fully God. Reducing himself to the form of man because of his great love for you and me. His presence on earth changed everything. He brings gifts of joy and peace and comfort and salvation and so much more. But he also left it all to rescue you and to rescue me. Remember, you are loved. Jesus loves you. Thank you for joining us in today's podcast. You can visit the show notes for quotes from today's podcast and scripture references. We pray today has been a blessing, and we encourage you to reach out to us through our app, our website, or our Facebook page. You can find our app by searching for Woman at the Well Ministries in your app store or through our website at watwm.org. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash watwm. 
If you visit our website, you'll be able to subscribe to Bible Bits, a daily devotion written by Kim and delivered Monday through Friday by text message. Woman of the Well Ministries is a nonprofit organization dedicated to serving our Heavenly Father. And it is through your loving and generous support that our ministry continues to bless others. To learn how to partner with Woman at the Well Ministries, please visit our website. Thank you to the Gospel Group Fudge Creek for letting us use their hit song, Happy Girl. We greatly appreciate your prayers. We are praying daily for our listeners. Remember that God loves you. You are loved. to have. Happy girl.